Hey, Artie and Jack here. We're going to be doing a page by page on Stuart's rods. Uh, we built this a while ago. We're going to do this fairly quickly. But for those of you who have questions or would like some further clarification on this kit, hopefully some of the things we'll speak about today will help. Uh, welcome Jack Ellis, of course. Jack built the prototype you see in front of you, and we're going to kind of keep this succinct, okay? That's a word. Uh, on page one. I have succinct in my living room. You kitchen. have one in the kitchen too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I got one in the bathroom. Yeah, mm. that one's succinct. Yeah, it is. Anyhow, this is called Stuart's Rods, and uh, the first page here, the first page is always an important part of any kit, especially with us because we rely upon color graphics to help tell the story. And if you want to see how things are weathered, what colors they're painted, and so on, we don't get into that much in our directions. We kind of rely upon the technology that we have, uh, visual. A visual aid is far better than us telling you what color to paint it. You can come up with whatever color you want, and we won't tell anybody. Anyhow, Jack, uh, first page, the usual. Uh, not much to say, I'm, I'm assuming, right? Good picture. Yeah, keep using it as a reference as you go. It works really well that way. We're going to quickly skip to page two here. Two more photos, and it discusses what we're using for a base. This is Gator Foam in this case. You can get uh, Gator Foam at GatorFoam.net fellow named Dave Myers. We rely upon it. And here again, just two different angles. Jack, anything revealing here? No, I'll give you backside, which is what we call the backside. And then it gives the other other side, backside and the, and the front, kind of the front side. And what's yeah. nice to hear is you can see on the backside of this one, there is some detail, including a loading dock. So there's something to do. And yet more color pictures on what would be, well, what happened here? Hold on a second. Ah, shit. And I'm done. <laughs> okay. Maybe it's you. Maybe uh, it's me. Go back on oh, page two. No, I'm back on page three again. It's okay. All right. Uh, we had a little camera glitch. Hopefully this works out. We're going to go to page three. The pages are not numbered. They're done automatically uh, through our uh, printer. And we do change the numbers once in a while. So we just don't, don't, uh, don't put numbers on it. It can get confusing. Anyhow, we're on page three. Here again, more photos. Uh, especially uh, from the height uh, perspective, so you can see a little bit better how uh, Jack handled the roofs. Anything yeah. on here that uh, demands attention? No, just take a look at this. You can see somehow the weathering is, is done on it. You can get an idea of where it sits on the ground and things like that. That's things you can use later on once you're almost done. Well, especially note, uh, noteworthy here is the fact that we're using MDF for our brickwork instead of car stock or task board or something like that. Uh, the next page. All right, I'm going to say one more thing. What's that? The ones on page three mm -hmm. have the cupola on the top, and if you look on page two, they don't have the cupola on top. That's because you built more than one of these, right. yeah. and we there tried a, different things. There, yeah, there is an option. Uh, are we? Uh, is that option in the? Yeah, yeah, it is. You can the build option is in the kit, so you can build it either way, and it'll give you an idea of building it with the cupola or without the cupola. That's uh, up to you guys. So. Just so you know, there is a difference between those. I don't want you to come back and say they're two different buildings. <laughs> it just gives you an option, that's all. And of course, if you want to save the cupola for another build or yeah. the dormer for another build. Save it. Hey, do it. It's it's in the kit. You pay for it. Uh, and we just want to make sure you have some flexibility here. The next page. Now, Jim Mooney does our engineering. He does our drawings. And if there's anybody better, I cannot imagine who that might be. Uh, he's amazing. And page four is just one of the drawings. Most of the drawings here, Jack, are full scale, if I remember. Yeah, these are full scale. And you see there's an aerial drawing there. So when you look down upon the thing, uh, the aerial drawing depicts the cupola. Yeah, this also gives you a footprint. So if you need to measure something out for a footprint, you can do it right off of this top aerial view, and it'll give you a footprint that you need. And then the, the view below it is on the, uh, uh, the, the I would call it the face side. So um, if you looked at it, it would be... The face, the face side, where the brick, little brick building is. And then if we move on to the next building. Mm -hmm. Not the next building. The next next page, I'm sorry. Same building, Same different building. page. Yep. We're going to go from the back end of it is the top, or top one, and the other end is basically the front end of it. So um, it shows the top paper shed, and then the front shows the uh, board and batten shed. And it shows where all the uh, chimneys go and all that stuff, that the way we've placed them. And on the next page, yet more drawings. This time we actually have a uh, depiction of the cupola. 
So if you wanted to use that, you'll have a mechanical in front of you. And it says part numbers which start on the following page on the bottom are not to scale. The drawings are. So you can look at yeah. those drawings and have a damned accurate idea of what you're getting into. So we start with on the bottom is what we call the cut files that show you all the numbers of all the different parts. And that's what we mentioned is not to scale, but it does show you roughly where they are. And the numbers, well, these show the walls and a couple of the pieces for the uh, the eyebrow window on the top. And you'll notice they're labeled CB, which means clapboard. Turning quickly to the next page, I kind of went a little crazy here because you not only have part numbers, but in a lot of respects you have names like stair treads, optional ladder, cooler vent sides, things like that. Gives you an idea what they are. It, it takes a little bit of time, but sometimes if I've got nothing to do, <laughs> This is what I do. Uh, so but, if that, you, but if you go in looking for something, um, they should be roughly on the sheets that you look at. So it's easy to go hunt one down and, and then uh, take it and, and match up the numbers with the instructions. Yeah, well, and that page is, on the back of that is obviously another page with more part numbers. So I'm looking at part number 95, 97, 97, 97, part number 97 may be the winner as far as the highest part number in the case. Oh, here's 100, 103. We go to 103 on this. So if you don't think there's much engineering involved here, think again. There's a lot of small parts. So, you know, your windows are four pieces, so it takes up, gobbles up the numbers pretty quick. Now, the next page, uh, as, as I go through this, uh, refers to internal internal bracing and these are not to scale so don't measure any bracing off of this you can see here that they're clearly i think pretty clearly not to scale um mm. let's see what it says here interior bracing is not an option if you plan on painting the corner posts a contrasting color to the shell they can be applied later in construction which is our typical way of doing things yep. And, you know, hold the pieces up to these. It's been a while since we've done these instructions. If by chance these are to scale, feel free to use the bracing diagrams as templates as far as how to cut your interior bracing. Yeah, on the embracing, the only thing you want to you want to pay attention to is that we put the rafter tail combs in um, and you can't have the bracing interfere with them. So just kind of look at where it says you know, leave a space and you have to leave a space for the rafter tails. Gaps are there for a reason. There's plenty yeah. of wood. You can fill in the gaps, but then you mess up the model. And the next page, it says internal bracing diagram, page two. Pretty obvious what we're talking about there. Uh, if you find yourself with interior bracing that has shifted and is no longer true with the wall edges, take time to sand it flush before continuing with, continuing with construction. Wouldn't you agree? If you're way off, my suggestion is you try and get it off um, and oh. then put another piece on. But if it's just a little bit, you can sand it flush. You don't want too much because then you're going to change the size of the wall. If well, the bracing sticks out, then that's not a problem. But if the wall sticks out, that's the problem. That's the problem. Now, I have to tell you, when it comes to removing bracing, I don't resort to a number 11 blade. I resort to a single edge ra razor blade. I, I find the single edge, edge razor blades deflect less and I... Uh, for me, they, they provide a better... What I usually do is is split it down. I'll take a piece at a time each time, splitting the piece down and it comes right off. And then the last piece is just a little bit. You can sand it right off. So you're go. whittling. Yeah, I'm basically whittling. He's but I'm whittling with the grain. So the grain is splitting it off. You can replace the piece very easily. I used to whittle my kerchief things for my Boy Scouts, you know. Yeah. That was that was never easy. You this must, is easier. I think you had those too tight for a I, long time. I did. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Next page here starts with an exploded view, and this is a construction view. Let me bring this really close. It's a construction view because at this point you have your bracing in. Uh, we would suggest normally that you have uh, your walls colored. Uh, we've discussed priming before. I do it. Jack doesn't. On this kit, uh, how did you treat the walls? You, I assume you colored the walls before uh, joining them together, uh, right? The main building, the main building, which is the centerpiece here, this main building, mm -hmm. um, the uh, corner boards and the wall are all the same building. So I was able to basically put that whole building together and then paint it. Um, I painted it while it was all one piece. And then I used a, I used my concrete color that I used from Woodland Scenics because I like it as a base color. And then I'll uh, ink an alcohol over the top of it. And you know, I understand the, the primary primary shell here is parts number one, two, three, four, and five. Yeah. Uh, make sure you put them together carefully. Make sure they're square. It's important. And we discussed that here on that same page I just told yeah, you about. 
If you decide you're going to use your corner boards as a different color, which it can be done, um, you want to paint your walls first and then paint your, then um, after you bra I brace it, then I paint my walls and then I'll paint my corner boards and then I'll attach my corner boards and then put the building together. Now, you, what you're seeing here, basically, like many Par Mills kits, there are several sub-assemblies because you have a side shed, a shed on the other side. Three sides e have sheds on it. Easily, but you also have the cupola on top or the dormer, and you have your little uh, docking uh, situation on the rear. So there's a lot of little projects. Yep. So if you're stuck on a big project, go to a little one. Uh, occupy some time, the cooler tower, anything. Yep. Anyhow, on the bottom of the same page, we discussed putting in rafter combs. You'll see they're number 23. And the sub-assemblies have to be dealt with, and we mentioned that here. There are attic window assemblies. The attic window assemblies are actually boarded up windows. And yep. we give you some laser cut, very finely laser cut uh, plywood to do that. So you have kind of an abandoned look. That's not something you're going to find on a piece of plastic precast windows. It just doesn't work like that. They show you at that step um, putting the windows and doors in. You may want to wait a little bit on the doors and windows. Um, till you get the bulk of the handling of the of the model done and then put your windows in, especially the windows that you want to tip out because you're going to grab a hold of it one time and knock those tipped out windows out. So wait a little bit longer, get all, all your three bump outs on and then you can fit your windows. They just need to be glued in at that point. Well, you know, we're dealing with laser cut windows here. Typically LB means laser board sticky sided if there's an SS and windows typically are. But we also have some plastic windows. This is kind of a hybrid kit. We use a little bit of each. Of course, the doors and the freight doors are all sub-assemblies as illustrated on the following page yep. where it says windows and doors sub-assemblies. These are things you can prime and put aside until you're ready to use them later. For me, I'd rather do that than have a hiccup when I'm in the middle of putting bigger things together. I hate to stop for something but, small. Believe it or not, this is one of the first things I do because I want to. Uh, I'm going to weather my windows, so I want to get my windows put together without glazing yet, and I want to uh, get them their base color and then a little bit of uh, dry brushing over the top and ink and alcohol to weather them a little bit, and then I'll put my glazing in and I'll put them aside, and then when I'm ready to put them in the building. With a little tacky glue, I'll put them right in the building, and they they are they haven't been handled, they haven't been broken, they haven't been tipped, or so it just makes it easier. So basically, we're talking about the the shell. The main part of the building has to be square. Everything else kind of congregates around it. The next page, we speak about the optional cupola and how to install it. We did have special map by Jim Mooney uh, designed some really cool. Uh, resin castings for this to simplify construction. This is kind of a tricky construction thing. We tried it originally by using laser cut components. This is easier and it's accurate. Uh, so on the next page where it says optional cupola right on top, you can follow along, finish up the main carcass of the building before going on. You don't have to add the cupola right away. We show it being assembled at this point. You can you can come back and do it or you can do the dormer assembly. Jack, what do you have on this? Yeah, you can do that. That's that's fine. Um, you can't do both the dormer and the cupola no. because of the way that he's got the um, resin base for the cupola. So you, uh, you, you need to pick out which one you want to do. But again, either of those you can save for later and put them on a different building, depending upon which one. Well, you, you know, you can and you can't, there's a, there's a correction. See, the cupola has a certain specific pitch that you understand this is a salt block box pitch on this building. And the cupola is designed, because it's resin, you understand, to sit on this specific pitch. So while you can use some of the cupola, the base part is really designed specifically for this building. On the other hand, the dormer can be fudged a little bit and you can use that pretty much any place. Yeah. So you might want to keep that in mind. Yeah. Agree? Yep. Okay. I can I can change the dome a bit, uh, the cupola base too. There's a way to do it. Well, let's not resin or not. Let's not go there right okay, now, no. Harriet. All right. What do we have here? Next page. Next page. Dock assembly. Now we're kind of looking. I I could turn this around. I know it's not much of a model to look at here, size wise. Uh, the dock assembly is simple. It's on the back of the building. There are cinder block castings, a piece of uh, basswood or plywood and some uh, rafter tails again. Uh, the only deal here is assembling the door. The door, yep, yeah, put the door and the, and the rollers on the door. Mm -hmm. They'll come, the rollers are little small uh, white metal castings. They go on the door very nicely and uh, hang over the rail on the top and, and it goes together 
quite, quite easy. Um, the dock assembly, you can put it together. It does come with a scribed piece of wood that shows planking for the top of it if you want to. And if you want to use your own wood, you can do, you know, individual board plank if you want a little more realism, but you don't have to. It comes with the, uh, the piece and with the, some um, good weathering, you can make it look like individual boards, I think. This is a building that honestly invites lifting boards. Now, we didn't lift that many. Uh, we rely more on proper painting techniques and some uh, possibly like punch line washes or alcohol and India ink, things that would help pronounce things visually to make them more obvious. Uh, you understand most people are going to be looking at this much more casually than you will when you're building this kit. Uh, anything else on this page, Jack? Are we pretty good? I think we're different. I think that's pretty straightforward. I think so too. Now on, have... the, on this page or mm -hmm. on the page? Um, yeah, the only thing you want to make sure is um, this small front part of the building you can see here, which has a sign on the roof so you can get it, is that jogs out to the beyond the building. So make sure it, it, it nests in there. And if you look at the directions, you'll see there's a little jog in the roof that it fits right in there. And it can be fudged a little bit if need be, right? A little bit, yeah. It, it, it will line up. It doesn't have to line up exactly perfect with, with the other end. but It's um, called the board in Batten office. It's yeah. referenced a little bit farther down on the page here. And a little bit of text on it. And that roof is a tar paper roof. And you can do that tar paper roof before you put it on. It's a flat roof. So you can put your tar paper on, get it weathered to the way you want to, and then glue it right down after it's all done. So... Once you get your siding all weathered and everything else, then, then it goes right, right. It's basically glued onto the building. It's just stuck on there and it's, that's, that's, uh, that side's done. So. And you would think on the, up, the opposite side here with the cooler on top, that this building would be the easiest, easiest extension. It's really, really basic, but it's not that easy because, because there are several layers of detail from the base of the building, which I believe is cardstock, onto uh, tar paper sheathing, yep. onto Battens yep. on top of it. Mm -hmm. So you're dealing with three layers. A piece of clapboard, you're dealing with the one layer. Here you're mm -hmm. dealing with three. So don't sell it short because it's actually more involved and makes a great one evening project and well worth well worth spending some serious time on. Yeah. On this page also, it talks about the brick boiler house on the side. Um, so we have... It does. Yeah. We okay. have... Uh, that is a uh, MDS, MDF. Uh, scribed brick siding and then it has Jim's what they call zipper corners that yeah. actually fit very tightly together they go on with a little bit of white glue so you can move maneuver them or yellow glue so you can maneuver them so they fit real tight um, and then when they're done and you mortar them up you can hardly tell that there's even a seam there they go on very easy and then you have your um, the roof material which is corrugated metal which is our, our paper um, easy to work with. It glues easy. It paints really well. Um, it's not hard to, to rust up. And then you just put your uh, stack in there, your stack in wherever you want. And well, what did you use for coloring the, the brick color on this specific model? Do you recall? It is an orange. I, I can't remember what, what exact color it is. Not critical. Um, you know, it's not a critical because I'm going to do a, uh, I do my mortar, which I use a uh, one-time spackle, which is an acrylic spackle rub it in, rub it off so it's smooth, and then um, I will do some uh, ink and alcohol washes over it, and then I'll do my corrugated roof, and I'll use a sponge and uh, three three different colors of rust, a dark color, a, a light color, and almost a yellow and you, color. Do you, uh, do you remember, you, did you use pan pastels in this? I mean, I would I go do for it this at the myself. End because one thing happens, if I use paints, if you use paints, which acrylic paint is, um, to do my rust, it gives it a, a little bit of a sheen, so it doesn't look like it's rusty, it looks like it, so I need to take and, and dull it up. So with a little bit of pan pastels, I will add that to the roof to make it look more rusty. And I will accent my uh, joints with a little bit of black pan pastel. Not a lot, just a little bit, just to accent where the seams are. Well, to reiterate, if you go to the next page, it actually gets into detail on the side shed assembly, you know, with the battens and the, and the uh, tar paper. And lower on that page, we have uh, a talk about the cooler assembly, which is really basically six components and a couple of legs. And yeah. the cooler, uh, which you may not choose to use, uh, but you can see it here we do. It's right here on the building. And it's a simple assembly. Here again, you can hijack this one for maybe, 
another kit, uh, another yeah. whether it's us or another manufacturer that maybe doesn't include quite the amount of spare parts and goodies that we that we do tend to. Yeah, it's got one pair of legs that go under it for the roof. So mm -hmm. if you went to another roof, you could you might have to modify those for the height so they're the right pitch, and then um, some couple of pieces of scrap or cross bracing, and you it goes together really really quick and easy. Piece now, on the top. Now we do go quickly to the next page. We have a weather vane in this kit. As a matter of fact. There are two different weather vane designs. They're actually made on laser board. It's really cool stuff to use. Uh, you have to use a pin that goes on top of, well, this, this model doesn't have the cupola, but the, if it had the cupola, it would go on top of the cupola. And the nice thing is because there are two different designs and two different sets of north, south, east, west, you actually have enough here for two different weather vanes. And people have, have asked us if we'll sell the weather vanes individually. And at this point we have not, but here you're getting a free one. So if you want to, you can put it on this building also. You could put it put, put on it, two weather vanes. Yeah. No, you could put a weather vane on. You this could building. do it on that. Not a problem at all. What would you that. do to adapt a weather vane on there so it would look, you know? I would probably put organic. some kind of a block of wood that's just notched so it fits on it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would put the weather vane into that piece and from there up, just so it it's not just sticking in the. It just looks like it's got some kind of way to to uh, attach it to the roof. Now, if you notice, we have a stair assembly here, the laser cut stairs, the instructions are there, and the uh, larger diagram on the top of this specific page shows the location. Uh, typically, I don't paint stairs. I'm sure Jack doesn't. We generally hit them with a wash. I, I uh, usually, you can yeah. paint them white, I guess, I or something. Stain them, I usually stain them a, a, a brownish, you know, board color brown, brownish black. Now, we do have on the next page a uh, picture with the dormer on. So this is kind of a switch hitter. We, we're trying to let you visualize it if, the if, way, you know, either with the dormer or without the dormer, with the cupola or without the cupola. If I'm going to go back to the stairs just quick, because if you haven't built our stairs before, um, Jim's come up with this way to attach them to a what they call a spacer block, which holds your um, stringers right. parallel. And then all you have to do is glue on your, your treads um, let them dry till they're, they're, um, you know, they're dry. The glue is dry, and then just nip off the bottom four pieces, and away you go. It's so simple and so easy to do. You're not having to try to hold them in line and get them straight and get them all this. It just, it's, it's a great way to do it. And Anyone we, who's worked on our quick steps or in our previous yeah. kits, and we've yeah. been using stairs yeah. in our kits for 21 years. That's for the people that have not used them. And the other thing is, we do sell the quick steps. So if you ever have a kit that you need a set of stairs on. And you don't want to cut all these stringers and everything else. The quick set makes it very, very easy to do. And they're typically made out of plywood, so we're not dealing with a right. grain situation because grain in wood can get very, very delicate, especially in these small steps. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what I didn't mention uh, in the instructions, Jack. I'm looking at these here. Uh, there's a quick reference to how to put this Stewart's Rods sign on the side. And here again, it's pretty obvious it's right here. Not rocket science. Figure it out. It's three pieces, a couple sticks for legs. Uh, what we did not discuss on here. Reference the pictures. Reference the pictures. Yeah. That's why we have the photos. Uh, what we did not reference on here was the uh, the way we added the roofing because you're dealing with actually three kinds of roofing here. You're, you're dealing with basically tar paper roofing on the two external sheds. What would be shingles? shingled roofing shingles. Uh, shake shingles, yeah, shake shingles. On, on the main building and in the front we're dealing with the front corrugated. And the is, yeah corrugated so yeah. you're dealing with three kinds of uh roofing on this uh we've done videos and so on in the past it gets and by the way now if you notice every kit comes with a special uh little tutorial that's not included in these specific instructions it's a it's a tutorial from our craftsman kits 101 uh tutorial bigger tutorial that we've kind of condensed just for shingles and this is something that Jack had written and it'll give you a quick overview on how to install pretty much any kind of shingles in short order so I don't know if you've seen that but it's in the kit in the box so don't don't toss that you can use that on any kit at all yeah this um the top shake shingles are our paper the thin paper um it's got the Glue on the back, so you don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. It's peel and stick, uh, row by row. Um, and if you look in that tutorial, it'll tell you how to put them on to, so they look right. And then we go back and lift a few of them, just a little bit, um, and do a lot, a bunch of dry brushing. And then the tar papers are our tar paper also with the nail holes. 
um, and then you're just gonna put one up from the bottom and work your way to the top overlapping just a little bit maybe throw a patch here and there in for some holes in with a pin to look like nail holes and then do your weathering it's it, this is it, they're all pressure they're all uh Got the glue right in the back, so it makes it so much easier to do. This is a time-consuming kit. Make no mistake about it. It takes uh, a little time. If you were to go from kit to this quality, this quality model, which is what we all, I think, aspire to, maybe even better, depending on you know, where you're at, uh, this is not a one- or two-hour project, Jack. What, no. what, 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 do you, what do you think at best? It's uh, about four nights. So I would say about four nights. Well, what's almost, a night for you, 12 hours? Week. Almost a week, yeah. <laughs> well, for me, it is, yeah. Um, you could probably do this in four or five nights and that that's probably three hours a night so so I figure 15 yeah. hours and you know what if it takes you 20 that means you get more for your money so it's yeah, nothing wrong fun. with that yeah. and it does come with some details uh, some resin castings the resin is easy to glue up I would normally use tacky glue I used to use my contact cement especially on the heavier castings that we still use sometimes in in metal because they are they need more adhesion uh, is there anything else to wrap this up, Jack? No, but we do have some some uh, things that come in clusters, so you yeah. don't always have to use the whole cluster. You can take your uh, razor saw and, and cut them up to the, to the number of boxes you want, and you can get twice, you know, you get three boxes over here and five over here instead of just one pile of, you know, eight boxes. So don't don't look at them as one piece. You can, you can chop them up and make them wherever you want, and if you've got a side that doesn't look good, you're going to put it against the wall anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, there's, I think, some barrels with it, and I uh, in this particular one, I threw a junk pile in the back out of my junk box, which has come some old strip wood that was stained up and, you know, old tire and things like that. So always save that stuff in a box because you can always use it thrown in the thing. Now, I do have to add, I did not change the instructions yet. We had uh, one of our guys, one of our builders, one of you guys, uh, get to us and tell us that we have... Uh, a, a mistake on the racing diagrams. I think it was wall number five. Keep an eye out. I will amend these, but if you have the kit already, please be aware of this. I got to go. Uh, we have a lot going on, and we wanted to do this when you folks asked for it, and hopefully this will help walk you through and understand this kit. Yeah, the last page is a couple of uh, signs that go on the wall. We threw one on the back so you can see it. There are three here, so you can figure out if you want to add them in different places. You can do that, or you can make even a billboard out of one of them if you want. You so, could do that. Yep. You could, so, have, yep. you could have fun, right? Yeah. That's the idea. Yep. Okay. And if you rearrange it, let us know. We'd like to see what you did with it. So if you put one on the back and one on the front that wasn't that way, let us know because we'd love to see them when they rearrange them. That's, that's really the fun part about this. Well, that's it for Jack Ellis and myself, Artie Biggie. This is called the Page by Page. And in this case, it's for sewage rods. I understand this is only at the time of this filming available in Eco Scale. So that's it. Jack, catch you soon. Yeah, I'll see you later. Until the next page by page, Artie from Bar Mills. And we're out. <laughs> Did you see the end of the other one was pretty funny? <laughs> that, that was cute. Nancy was Nancy was just laughing. Okay. Hopefully it recorded.